Morning, everybody. That's okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. So we're going to get started just as a more formal introduction. My name is Brandon. I've been doing martial arts for the last 10 years. I've been teaching Tai Chi for the last like two, two and a half. So the way Tai Chi, at least my Tai Chi class works, is we start off with a standing meditation. We move on to some Qigong. And then we get into the Tai Chi. All three things are interconnected as Tai Chi is a definitely a good combination of Qigong, Tai Chi, and meditation all in one. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me... So I'm going to share something on the screen, which is going to highlight how we do our breathing. So... Our breathing is done through the diaphragm. We don't want to expand our chest upward when we breathe. So if you can see the video, you'll see that when I inhale, my stomach expands outward. And as I exhale, my stomach retracts. So that's going to be the constant throughout the class and everything that we do through our standing meditation, through our Tai Chi, through our Qigong, the breathing the diaphragm expands, the stomach expands, and then as you exhale, the stomach retracts. So let's get started. All right, so our standing meditation, you're gonna stand neutral position, feet single shoulder width apart, buckle your knees and put your hands on your belly. Try and focus on the expanding and contracting of your stomach through the breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Keep your eyes slightly open. So you're gonna breathe in deep and breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in and 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 out. Now we're going to move on to some Qigong. We're going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. Do your best to follow along. Breathing in and breathing out through the mouth. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And on this next one, try and squat low. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And the closing, breathe in. And out. 
Very good. Now let's get our joint warm-up going. Neck stretch up. Down. Stretch up. And down. Right side. Left. Right. Left. Neck rotations. Other way. Hands up. You're going to clench your fists and stretch out your fingers as far as you can. Grab tight and then open up and stretch. Wrist rotations in. Shoulder rotation forward. Stretch the upper back. Raise the shoulders up high and circle forward. Back, stretch the rib cage. Next, we slap the kidneys for this one. There's a series of three exercises. The first one is for the kidneys and the liver. What you do is your arms stay loose and you swing side to side. All you're doing is guiding the directioning of your hands. Other than that, they're loose. So the first one is for the kidneys. Slap side to side, turning your waist. Now the next one is for the heart and the lungs. You're gonna hit the chest and the upper back. Same story, keep the hands loose and guide their direction. And then the next one is for the Dantian and the Ming Moon and the digestive organs, right below your belly button and your tailbone. And hip rotations. Big circles all the way around. Other way.
and separate your feet. Grab the ball, waist turning. Inhale as you go up, exhale as you go down. Try to keep your eyes focused on the imaginary ball. Breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth as you go down. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Other way. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Shake it out, feet together. Knee rotations. Other way. And shake it out. Next thing we move on to is the slapping the body. This is to stimulate the meridians and acupuncture points throughout the body. Slap the left side. Other side. The legs. The lower back, this And next is the stomach washing. So for this, this is a little bit tricky. So what you're gonna do, your hands are gonna be this way, the fingers together. You're gonna push into your stomach while it's relaxed. Then you're gonna tense the muscles in your stomach and that's gonna push the fingers out. Now you're gonna go, to your left. So this is your left, this is my left. I'm gonna be going this way. You guys are gonna be going this way to your, your left. So let's try it. Go in a big circle, all the way down to your belly button and around. Very good, now top of the head with the fingertips. This is to stimulate the pressure points on the top of the head. And one off the hands. Now we move on to massaging the face. This stimulates the points inside the face and smooths out wrinkles. So the first one's gonna be the forehead. They use the ridge of the hand and massage the forehead. The eyes going down and even to the sides of the head around the temple. The nose all the way down the frown line.
the mouth, close the mouth and go around the lip line. Neck, both hands. And the next exercise is for the thyroid glands. It looks a little silly, but it works. So your fists are down by your waist clenched. You're going to clack your teeth and tense the muscles in your neck like this. That's to stimulate the thyroid gland. And this is done standing. And next is the exercise for the kidneys. Now this one, you're going to cover your ear with your palm, both palms, and the fingers are gonna be this way. You're gonna hit the base of your skull with these two fingers. And if your ears are completely covered, you should hear like a drum beat inside your head. Keeping your mind, a lot of times when people can't hear it, it's because they're not keeping their ears completely covered. So if you have headphones, this would be a good time to take it out. And now let's move on to our Qigong. This Qigong is called the Patwa Chin, the Eight Brocades. The first one is holding up the sky for respiration, digestion, and elimination. So you're gonna stand in the neutral position, feet about single shoulder width apart, the hands are interlaced. And we breathe in, rising up, and breathe out as you come down. Then breathe up and stretch up all the way. Keep breathing in, and exhale as you open up. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Very good, that was number one. Number two, pulling the bow and shooting the arrow. Now for this one, you're gonna utilize the horse's stance. Feet are about double shoulder width apart. We're going to be rising and sinking in the stance. Now with the hands, you want your eyes to follow the nail on your index finger as you open up and stretch wide. Now I'm going to be going to my right. You guys are supposed to be going to your left. So I'm gonna be your mirror. So breathe in. And following the finger, breathe out. And stretch the chest. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. 
and out. The closing, breathe in and out. That one was to sharpen the eyesight, strengthen the liver and the kidneys. Now the next one is called pressing down and up. This one is for the stomach and the spleen. This is standing in that neutral position. Keep in mind when you're standing in this position, it's imperative that your butt is tucked in to maintain a spinal alignment. Same story, I'm going to be your mirror. So I'm gonna go this way to stretch my right side. You guys need to be stretching your left sides first. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And the closing, breathe in and out. Next one, number four, looking back. This one is to rid negative emotions, anxiety, stress, and fear. So we're gonna start off with the horse stance and the breathing is as follows. Breathe in and out. 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 And be closed. Breathe in and out. Awesome. Now number five, this one is to rid the heart of excess chi and to strengthen the pericardium. Now this one's a little bit difficult. So the inhalation is for one full rotation all the way around. Now when you go down, try your best to keep your back as straight as possible. And the hands are on right up on top of the knees. Breathe in, all the way around, breathing in. And other way, breathe out. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in and out. Last one, breathe in 
and out. Shake it out. Number six, jolting back. Now keep in mind, when we do our neutral position, it should not be a resting position. If we're standing with our legs straight, we're not activating our legs. So throughout the class, if we're standing, the knees should be buckled along with the butt being tucked in. That way your legs are constantly being used. So in this one, we're in that neutral position, keep those legs bent. And this one is for the immune system. Breathe in. And out. And reach down. Bend your knees if you have to to touch the floor. Breathe in. And once you straighten out, you're going to breathe out and lean back just a little bit. Then straighten up as you breathe in. And breathe out as you go down. Breathe in as you rise and straighten up. And exhale as you lean back. In. Out. Breathe in. Out. And we close, breathe in. And out. Good. Number seven, staring at the fist with angry eyes. So for this one, the fists are going to go out and put a little bit of tension in the arms and your eyes open wide as you stare at the fist. This is to mitigate anger and stress. Breathe in. And out. 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 And the closing, breathe in. And out. Last one, number eight. Rising up with the heels to bring the chi and energy to the crowd. Now for this one, you're going to rise up with your heels. If it causes you to lose balance, you don't have to raise up too high, just a little bit. And when you go down, you kind of want to plop down, feel a little bit of a jolt. And your feet are a little bit closer together than usual on this one. Breathe in. As you rise up. And breathe out as you go down. Breathe in. And rise up with the heels. And breathe out as you jolt out. Breathe in. And out. Very good. Now we're going to move on to a seated meditation and a guided meditation. So if you prefer to sit crisscross on the floor, that's fine. If you prefer to sit on a chair, that's fine too, so long as you're comfortable and you can maintain a spinal alignment. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to sit on the chair, and I'm going to hold my hands, my 
if you're a male, your right hand is on top of your left. If you're a female, your left hand is on top of the right. Now close your eyes and try to keep the breathing with the count and try and focus on that abdominal breathing. When you breathe in, your stomach expands. When you breathe out, it contracts. So we're gonna do four count inhalation, then hold for two seconds, four count exhalation, then hold for two seconds, and continue that way. So we begin, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, and keep going on your own. Try to keep that pace in your head. Breathe in, try to relax. Relieve your stress. Be at ease for a few more seconds. All right, and open your eyes. Now we're gonna move on to some stretching. We're gonna do the stretching on the floor today. If you, if you want, I'll be showing a variation of the stretch on the chair. So if we're gonna do the floor stretching, if you can see me. Feet together, butterfly stretch. And bounce your knees up and down. Try to get them to the floor. And if you're on the chair, you're gonna stretch your right leg this way. And for those of us on the floor, we're now we're gonna try and get our heads down to our shoes. And for those of you on the chair, switch legs. And right leg out, stretch forward. If anybody's on the chair, you can do the same thing. Right leg out and stretch forward. And switch. Be having your left side out, stretching forward. Try to get your forehead to your knee. And next, if you're on the floor, put your right foot back and lean back and stretch your quads. For those of you that are standing, find a place on the wall and do the same stretch this way. And switch, other side. And now we're gonna do one more hip stretch. If you feel like you need a wall or something to hold on to, feel free. If not, you can just work your balance this way, grab your foot and stretch it up. If you need to, you can lean on a wall or grab onto a chair and stretch up this way. Now 
I'm holding this one a little bit longer because I see people adjusting themselves. So I'll give you guys a second. And switch, other side. This one you want to try and gently bring your, your heel up towards your belly button. And shake it out. All right, let's see how much time we have. All right, cool. So now we're going to move on to the Tai Chi walking. If you feel you need water, now is the time. So, the Tai Chi walking. Uh, let me back a little bit. Okay. So, we're gonna start off with the weight in the back and the heel up in the front. So our toes pointed up. This is the toe to heaven stance. Now you're going to put the foot down and shift the weight forward. Then you shift back to where we just were, and you're going to turn outward as you shift the weight. Now once the weight is completely forward, you pick up the back leg and step to that toe to heaven stance. Then you shift forward, shift back, then turn outward, shift forward, and once the weight is forward, step. Again, so the heel is up with the left leg, whichever leg, shift forward, shift back, turn outward, shift forward. Step, again, shift forward, shift backwards, turn outward, shift forward, and step. And one more time. Put the foot down and shift forward, shift back. Turn outward, shift forward. Once the weight is forward, step to the heat. The toe is up, plant the foot, shift forward. Shift back, turn, shift forward, and step. Now, everything in Tai Chi is coordinated with breathing and hand movement. So before we get to the breathing, we're gonna start with the hand movements. So the first posture is gonna be grab the ball. Now, it's essentially the same as this position with regard to weight distribution, but it starts with the toe down as opposed to this toe up. And when you grab the ball, the top hand is by the throat, the bottom hand is by the belly button. Now from here, you're gonna step into that toe to heaven stance, Put the foot down, shift forward, and brushing the horse's mane. That's what this movement is called. So if you watch closely, the right hand is going to be the one that's coming up, or the bottom hand, whichever you hand, hand you have on the bottom comes up, the top hand goes down, and you turn. So this should be your end result. So again, grab the ball. You're going to switch the stance. Put the foot down and brush the horse's mane as you shift forward. Now, as you shift back and turn, you're gonna grab the ball again. The left hand or the opposing hand from before is gonna be on the bottom. Then you shift forward, step, and brush the horse's mane. Now, I exaggerated the step a little bit. You don't have to take such a big step. Now we're gonna shift over to the other side. So, again, you're grabbing the ball. If your right leg is forward, your right hand is on the bottom. Step, shift the weight, and brush the horse's mane. The right hand is up if my right, hand, my right leg is forward. Shift back, turn, grab the ball, shift forward, 
step, and brush. Now, some people, if they have issues with balance, when you step, if you need to stop in the middle and then go again, that's perfectly fine. You have to adapt it to best suit you. Again. So this time, we're going to incorporate the breathing. So when you grab the ball, you're inhaling. Then as you step out and brush the horse's mane, exhale. The whole way through until you come to completion. And as you twist and grab the ball, you're inhaling. Shift forward. Step, brush the horse's mane, then exhale. Again, grab the ball, twist and inhale. Step, brush the horse's mane, and exhale. Now we're going to go the other way. Inhaling as I grab the ball. Shift forward. Brush the horse's mane, and exhale. Shift back. Twist, inhale, shift forward, step, brush, and exhale. Breathe in. And out. Now, let's move on to the second walking pattern. Now, I like to start with that one because that one's a little bit difficult. The next one is actually relatively easy. So with this one, it involves the shifting of the waist, the weight rather, but it's all relative to which foot is on the ground and which foot is not. So start with your feet together. You're going to sink down. You're going to raise one foot and step out. Now the weight should be on the leg that's completely flat. As you place the foot down, you shift to the weight as you prepare to pick up the other foot. And you pick up, put down, and begin again. Now the weight's gonna shift the foot you just put down. Put it down, plant, and then shift. Now the weight's on the other leg, so this one's free to pick up. Put it down, and shift. And it works both ways. Now we're gonna go the other way. Pick it up, put it down, and shift. Pick it up. As the weight is on this leg now, put it down. Now I'm going to shift the weight to this leg. Pick it up, put it down, and shift the weight. Raise, sink, and shift. Raise, sink, and shift. One more time, going the other way now. Gonna sink down. Raise the foot, step off to the side, and shift. Raise the foot, put the foot down, and then shift the weight to that foot. Raise the foot, step out to the side, and shift. Raise the foot, step out, and shift the weight. Good. Now let's go over, the grab the ball and brush the horse's mane right quick, and then we can go over the Qigong in more detail. So, grab the ball, switch the stance, and as you shift forward, Brushing the horse's mane. Shift back. Turn the other way. Shift forward. Step. Brush the horse's mane. Shift back. Grab the ball. Shift forward. Switch the stance and brush the horse's mane. Going the other way now. Grab the ball and inhale. Shifting forward, exhale, brushing the horse's mane. Grab the ball, twist, inhale, shift forward, step, 
and exhale. Shift back, twist, and inhale. Shift forward, step, and exhale. Very good. Now, gradually, we'll learn all the foundational movements, brushing the horse's mane, brush, knee, and push, the waving the hands. All of that comes, but the most important thing to have is this footwork because that's going to be the one thing that's consistent once we start getting to the 24 postures, which is the form that has this verbatim, just as we did it. Now, let's go over the Qigong. One more time, we're going to detail the first two exercises. The first one is the holding up the sky. So what this one is for, respiration, digestion, and elimination. How does that work? So respiration, you're breathing. Every single Qigong exercise, every, everything we do in this class is going to, in some way, shape, or form, influence your breathing. So that's a simple one, digestion and elimination. How does that work? So as you do the exercise, you're constantly moving your torso, which is constantly moving your organs. So as you stretch up and out, you're expanding, you're stretching up. You're stretching out. It's not just the muscles that are being stretched. The organs are moving too. Not to mention, if you combine that with the breathing, the breathing itself, what happens? The lungs are expanding. The organs are essentially rubbing up against each other. They're being stimulated. So as you work the Qigong, you combine the stimulation that happens with the breathing and the movement. So the first one you inhale, as you come up and you're expanding, 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 and then as you come in, everything's contracting, going back to normal. And then again, you rise up, expand, breathing deep, and you stretch out as everything goes back to neutral with the exhalation. So try and keep those things in mind as you practice the exercise, it aids in the development if you have a better understanding of it the more like the more benefit you get out of it because you know what you're doing as opposed to just doing the exercise and yeah i'm just doing some exercise i don't really know what i'm doing but i'm doing some exercise so let's try it two more times then we'll move on to number two breathing in and this is breathing in through your nose and when you breathe out you breathe out through your mouth Then you breathe in as you raise, and you really want to get that stretch up. Really focus on getting that stretch up. And then breathe out and stretch out now. You stretched up, now we stretch out. One more time, breathe in and stretch forward without locking the elbows. And breathe out as you go down, stretch down. And breathe in as you go up. And breathe out and stretch out. Very good. Now, number two, this one I've always been a little bit iffy on because I, I don't remember which one is which. I know that the reason the eyes follow is A, to sharpen the eyesight, but I know one of the organs, I'm not sure if it's the liver or the kidneys, are directly correlated to your eyes. I know there's some disease that you can get that results in the yellowing of your eyes not a doctor, I don't really know the specifics. But the theory is that as you work the eyesight, you're strengthening the organ that's correlated to it. So you follow with your eyes to keep your eyes sharp and focused. And then as you go out, you're stretching the chest out. So there should end up being a tightness in the upper back, which results from the stretching. Any of you that, if any of you have done archery, you'll know it's the same thing. You have to have that back tension before you release your shot. So let's try it. So you're going to pick up and breathe in. Now the eye follows the index finger as you go out and exhale and stretch the chest and sink in the stance. Then you breathe in as you bring the hands together, still following the finger, and switch. 
breathe out. Follow, stretch, breathe in, and out, follow that finger, stay focused, and stretch that chest, breathe in, and out, breathe in, And we're gonna close it, breathe out. Now the stands for this one, I've learned this two ways. If you really wanna challenge yourself, you can do it just sitting in the stance and not moving. To take it easier on the knees, especially if you have knee issues, it's wise if you rise and sink so there's not that constant pressure. But the way I originally learned it was staying in the stance. As I inhaled, and exhale. So those are two variations you can take with you and practice at home. Well, you're already home. <laughs> so that's one thing. And then another thing I forgot to mention, when you go out, when you reach that full extension, you want to look in between this V shape at one specific point, be it a point on the wall, something out in the distance. That way you're constantly shifting your focus to work the eyesight. So as you go out, you're following the nail. Then as I fit, reach full extension, I shift my focus to something outside. Then I shift back to the nail as I retract and go out and repeat the same thing on the other side. So let's try that one more time. If you're down for the challenge, try and stay in the stance. Breathe in. And always going to the left first to breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And close. Breathe in and out good now let's see how much time do we have left got about five minutes okay so right now i'm gonna share with you guys a link that my teacher posted on youtube and let's see all right somewhere Okay, so right here it says Sifu GCR3, Masterclass A Brocage Qigong. This is my teacher. He put this up on YouTube not too long ago so that people can follow along. So as the classes progress, you can use this as a guide. You've gone through the H Brocades today with me. So this is definitely a good tool that you can use and it also has the guidelines of the beginning, you know, practice in fresh air, keep a clean mind, Swallow the saliva, don't drink cold water right after class, things like that. So that's a good tool. And I want to say he has some tai chi, some other Tai Chi stuff on there too that you guys can probably check out if you're interested. And uh, how do I get back to stop screen? Okay. All right. So let's see. I mean, is there a way you guys can unmute your mic if you have questions? Because I want to ask you guys if you have questions, but I don't know if we can do that here. <laughs> Yeah, you can. I just okay, cool. it? anybody have any questions? I don't have any question, but it's nice to see you, Brandon. It is nice to see you too. I missed you, everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> no idea how, how I missed you. Uh, yeah, it's Lucy. Hi, Lucy. All right, awesome. So let's run through the Tai Chi walking <laughs> one more time as we have five minutes. 
We're going to do both, and that should be time. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go through, well, we did the grab the ball twice, so let's go through the easier one. If my phone would stand up. Oops. <laughs> All right. Stay. Okay. Okay. So feet together. And you keep your hands on your waist, hands on your side, whichever you prefer. And sink down. Shifting to the this leg. Then step out. And you're going to shift the weight. Now, actually, let me just point something out. As you're shifting, once you reach your center, this is how neutral position should feel. Right here where you're centered, both weight is even. That's the position. Now, to continue with the stepping, all you're doing is going from neutral position and shifting. Then you pick up the foot and shift back to center. As you're shifting here, you pick up the other leg. And you shift. Keeping on with the shifting of the weight always. That's how you strengthen the legs. That's how you get the balance going. Now going the other way. Now if you wanted to do it with the breathing, you'd breathe in on one side, then breathe out on the other side. Breathing in on one side, breathing out as you go on to the other side. Always focusing on that expanding and contracting of the stomach. And I want to show you the hands, but the hands are complicated. <laughs> so let's save that for next class. Let's go over the grab the ball. So now I really want to emphasize the breathing. It's a little bit difficult when you're moving slow because it's gonna force you to draw out the length of that breath. So that's where the challenge comes in. You're inhaling and then you're exhaling from here all the way to here. So the length of your breath is should be the length of your movement. So I'm breathing in all this time. Breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, breathing in. And now that I'm about to step, I start breathing out, and I'm still breathing out all the way until I reach here. Breathing in, and I'm, I would still be breathing in until I step here and start to shift my weight. Now, the fun part about this is everything works together. So everything is synchronized. By the time my foot reaches its front, my knee rather stops here. Everything needs to reach that position at the same time. My waist, my arms, and my leg. By the time, essentially I, my arms shouldn't still be moving once I'm in this position. If my arms are still moving, then I'm taking too, my, I might be moving too slow in my arms or I might be moving too fast in my waist. So everything should end at the same time. Now that's if we're stopping. If we're not stopping, mentally, you would know once you reach a certain point, now it's time to shift into the next movement. Here's where I would stop. My waist is turned, my foot is turned, everything ended at the same time. Then as I step, now everything moves at the same time, my waist and my hands. This is where I would stop. Then I continue with the grabbing the ball, shifting forward, stepping, and brushing. Now, with regard to the stance, some people do this thing. Um, to be quite honest with you, you don't really get much out of this. I've seen, you know, Usually it's like Wu style Tai Chi. They're essentially standing up, which is, you know, it's fine. You know, it's better. Something's better than nothing. But if the more you can bend your knee, the more you're activating the muscles in your leg, the stronger you're going to get. In the Kung Fu, we have everything down here. In the Tai Chi, 
we're in the middle between standing and sitting here. So as opposed to being here, we'll be here. Now, obviously, not everybody's gonna be able to do that off jump. So if this is your best for now, go a little bit, a little bit more. So with the Tai Chi, with the Chinese arts in general, it's not about reaching your full potential. It's about going beyond it, little by little. So like when I have students stretching, like, oh, I can't go any further. I'll pull them maybe even just half an inch to pull more than they think they can go, just so that there's consistent and regular progress. Because if you don't push beyond where you're comfortable, you're not gonna grow much. Now, I wanna say that's time. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, for those of you that want to ask you me, like, you to be on your first row because she was about to do exactly what she did. I'm sorry. Can you repeat it? Hello. Can you repeat the question? No. Okay. All right. So, if nobody has any questions, that's it. Please stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you all for coming. I'm happy to see that you guys are interested in staying healthy and learning something new. If there are any questions, feel free to email me. My email is gonna be Brandon L. Borges. That's Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-L-B-O-R-G-E-S 0927-98 at Gmail. If you have questions about the Tai Chi in general, feel free to ask. I'm always here to help. Um, and yeah, stay healthy and practice. Check out the YouTube page if you can't remember.